Whether leftists like to admit it or not, or some misguided capitalists for that matter, we live in a world that is ruled by economics. Economics determines our standard of living, our level of happiness, the health of our population, and the strength of our respective nations. Economics is the reason that 330 million Americans can be more successful and powerful than 1.4 billion Chinese. And it's the reason why 7.2 million Jews in Israel are more successful and powerful than their hundreds of millions of enemies throughout the world. If recent events have taught us anything at all, it's that the use of the word enemies in this context is not hyperbole. There are hundreds of millions who seek the annihilation of Israel as a country and the Jews as a people. Why? Is it really because of a dispute over territory that's been going on for thousands of years? Not likely. Now, there are some cases in which there simply are no good solutions. The creation of the State of Israel in 1948 is one of these cases. You had a population of people who had been hated, persecuted, hunted and killed for centuries all across the globe, who had been purposely denied any means of creating a territory that they could defend and who, due at least in part to this concerted effort, had just been subjected to perhaps the greatest crime against humanity in the history of the world. One can understand the outrage in the free societies that allowed the Jews at long last to have a place that they could defend. One can also understand the fury of the Palestinians at having what was arguably their territory effectively handed over to the people that they despised. Which brings us back again to the essential question driving all of this. Why? Why did this hatred already exist way before Israel even existed? Why was it so vitriolic and vicious? Would we have seen the same level of murderous fury if Israel had been colonized by, say, the Buddhists instead of the Jews? Why were people, not only Arabs, but the Nazis and many others before them, why were they, to get to the core of the matter, so terribly afraid of the Jews? As he often does, Mr. Thomas Sowell crystallizes the answer to this seemingly unanswerable question, not only within the span of a YouTube short, but to a few sentences within that short, and, and arguably down to just one word. Uh, years ago, one uh, official of one of the Jewish organizations in New York asked me, well, what can Jews themselves do uh, in order to minimize the hostility they face? And I gave him a one-word answer, fail. 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 The Jews, as a people, are not Failures. The Palestinians, well, that's probably a tale for another time. But I do feel the need to point out that the countries who claim to be sympathetic to their cause, by and large, want nothing to do with them. The Palestinians who live in Israel, and there are millions of them, are much better off than those living in what is now effectively the Palestinian state of Gaza. Income of Israeli Arabs is on the order of 10 times that of Arabs who live in Gaza. And whose fault is that, according to leftists? Well, you can guess pretty easily. Also, what is newsworthy about this income disparity? Well, obviously, it's not that the Israeli Arabs are much better off than they would be outside of Israel. It's that they are not as well off as Jewish Israelis. The bitter politics of envy. That's what this all boils down to. That is why the Jews are hated, why they are persecuted, why they are killed. Gaza is a failure because it is a restricted economy. Israel is a success because it is a free economy. Free economies will always outcompete restricted economies. Free economies will always defeat restricted economies. Leftist Jews wake up. Reasonable leftists of other stripes wake up. What you saw in Israel on October 7th was the culmination of leftist thinking in all its grotesque glory. Once you have accepted the idea that there are two classes of people in the world, the oppressors and the oppressed, it's only a matter of time until you find a justification to murder the uh, oppressors, who, by the way, by and large, and in point of actual fact, are the ones keeping the alleged oppressed from starving in the streets. What's done is done. The state of Israel is here. It's here to stay. Arguments about what should or should not have happened in 1948 are no more relevant than what should or should not have happened in 1776, 1789, or 1917. 
the Israelis will use their military might, made possible by the free market, to defend themselves in whatever manner they see fit. Most free societies will support the Israelis. Most restricted societies will support the Palestinians. And unless the Israelis take a U-turn toward the backward economic policies of their neighbors, their ultimate victory is already assured.